I think I'm still not getting it. Let me, mod. Please just say the word, right? <laughs> <laughs> Before you guys crucify it's me. It's chocho mucho. Okay, and what does it mean? Oh, maybe you're somebody's love, you're, the, you're somebody's heartbeat, you're the bone of somebody's bone, the flesh of somebody's flesh, basically. Oh, okay. So was he liking somebody's bone of the bone or someone's bone? Yeah, he was liking somebody and then he's telling her if she's somebody's love, he should let her know. I see. Well, thank you. (laughs) That was the song we heard and that was featuring Kofi Kinata. Now, I told you we had a very interesting person join us in the studio for our discussion zone today. It's going to be like a lot of fireworks here. We have a very, very wonderful person here. I mentioned earlier, Juliet Sally, and she's the West African Regional Director of the United Cities and Local Government. One key thing they do is work to improve the living conditions of the African people. I don't know if there's anything more important than that because, I mean, for government, for everything, that is the key thing we're looking for people to have better living conditions. And I already have her in the studio with me. So we'll be moving on, right, to start our discussion segment. Hello, Juliet. Hi. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you. I'm happy you could make it, actually. <laughs> like, I'm super excited you could make it. Yeah. At a point, I was thinking, maybe she's not going to come. Maybe she won't be able to make it. Yeah, I'm busy, but I do consider this very important, so I had to... You know, make time for this. Yes, that's true. Thank yeah. you. Like, I'm very happy you were able to make it. Yeah. Uh, I know I know the drive here was not the best, but you have still made it. You yeah. found your way. Yeah. Yes. I don't know my way around Accra, but I will not tell you how many years I've been here because <laughs> it's a, a little bit of a scandal and it's going to embarrass you. So fine, but I think I, I made it. I'm here. Yes, <laughs> that's the most important yeah. thing. So I think I'm happy, first off, that we have you. We have you in such a key place of decision-making. And before we actually move on to anything else, I just want to find out what actually motivated you to venture into such a space, a space where you get to, you know, organize capacity building workshops. So you actually play a direct role in local governance. Yeah, uh, thank you for that question, because um, I think, uh, as you said before, there is nothing as critical as improving the conditions of living of the people, yeah. the African people most especially, you know, what we are, whom we yeah. are, yeah. you know, uh, our communities, what we need. So uh, that's why we keep having goals, development goals. Yes. Countries have it at the local level, we have it at the national level, and at the international level, we have the sustainable development goals. So implementing these development goals is our main objective. So that we do that. And because our local governments don't generally have the capacities, you know, they come from different walks of life. Yeah, so true. we support them so that they know what to do to be able to meet the needs of the people. That's what we do. So one key thing I can talk to you about is uh, when I I was working uh, in one organization, perhaps I could have moved from there after a few months or so, mm-hmm. but one mayor came to me and said, Madam, there is a very big river in my community Women, when it's raining, during the rainy season, Mm -hmm. women have to give birth in their homes and all of that because they can't cross to the other side. We need a bridge across that river. There was no funding for that, and my organization couldn't really fund that particular kind of a project. So the conditions were enormous. He couldn't meet it. So I asked him, bring one of your partners, you come. and So they said, give your own kind of funding. I had to tell the mayor that, he should say they will provide sticks and stones. The community mm-hmm. will provide sticks and stones as mm-hmm. their own contribution to that yeah. project. And he agreed. And we had to write it down in a technical manner for that funding to be done. And honestly, I will never forget that I contributed to that bridge, making women, you know, saving lives, yes. you know, maternal access you to get all of that. Yes. Yeah. yeah, the markets. They can't sell their goods. They get perished on the other side because they can't get to the market. Wow. Women can't go have birth in the hospital in very good conditions. So, so many things. So, I mean, it touched me. And yeah. I said, if I can make it, you know, Happen, to support. Yeah. So I had to move to the international level, then continuing that kind of work in a bigger space, mm-hmm. in a bigger capacity. Yeah. So that's how I find myself here. For almost wow. 30 years, I'm doing this. Wow. Wow, that's that's amazing. One, one thing I ju- I feel like there's a passion you have attached yeah. to this work. Yeah, really, really. Because at home, 
what do you what do you what do you how do you feel if you don't have water how will you feel if your environment is not clean That's if true. there's no school if yeah. there are no dispensaries i don't want to talk about referral hospitals dispensaries yeah that someone's going to have a wound and is bleeding and can't go to the hospital there's tetanus infection and all of that that is a lot at the local level that we can't even imagine so mm -hmm. for me because i do think that the first thing in our lives is to live well yes so there is no way i'm going to leave this place i'm going to die in it that's, that's because I want to be part of that contribution yeah. to making people live better. Better, yes. Yeah. The the impact that's super important. Now, um, mentioning the fact that you actually help them, how many African countries are you looking at? Is there a limited number, or it just runs across? Yeah, um, you know, we my organization is an international organization for Africa, based in Morocco, in Rabat, in the Kingdom of Morocco. I'm regional director for West Africa. That is the 15 African countries, countries yeah. uh, West African countries. But of course, there are other issues that I can go a little right. bit above. Yeah. I, I go beyond West Africa. Mm -hmm. I managed the climate change um, a project in my office for Neighbor European Union. That was for all of Africa. So I was mm -hmm. just going all over the place, you know, to support local governments implement yeah. climate change projects yeah. that is not limited to 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 my work here as west yeah. africa it covers all of africa sometimes i can also before i used to assess decentralization in all of africa wow. so i'll go to african countries i have to touch on african mm -hmm. countries there's so many issues that I, that makes, takes me to other african countries, countries and yeah. even more you know even more than go beyond africa wow yeah when it when need when need be we do that. We do that. Yeah, so okay. I'm not limited to West Africa. I can go out Outside of West Africa. Africa. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, being a woman and working in such a space, I mean, I feel that as much as in this current age, we have a lot of women, you know, who have like more to say, they've actually climbed to the ladder. They are no longer climbing. They have climbed to the ladder mm. and got into peaks and places. Have you encountered challenges professionally because you were a woman? Um, yeah, my main uh, members, I will not say partners, mm -hmm. because we call them members. My members, my uh, uh, my organization is an association, international association, association. for local governments. Mm -hmm. So when you look around, you realize that most of our mayors in Africa are men. Men, yes. So I'm working in a macho space, men, 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 yeah, most of them true. are men. And in that space, what I've learned is not so much gender, but your capacity you know, your capacity to be able to tell them what they need to know, no, what okay. they want to hear. So for me, I've had all the respect that I deserve in mm -hmm. that space from these mayors, and I actually thank them for that support. Because if they don't support me, I may not be able to do what I'm doing. Yeah, so true. my mayors in Africa and uh, other places, I actually thank them. They've never really bothered me. Perhaps another space, There could be a problem, yeah. Workplace, workplace. Yes, we encounter these challenges. As a regional director, um, some men will say, "But why is she the one who is the regional director? <laughs> why should That's I true. get instructions from a woman?" woman. That comes up. Yeah, I, I have that. I, I I get that from time to time in 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 the workplace. And how how do you react to this? How do you turn it around into yeah. a success? Yeah. Okay. I've had. For me, two main issues come to my mind. The one, the fact that you ask, why is it that? And he will want to disrespect you, not doing what you want, he, want him to do. Then another time I had to do, I had to recruit. So um, the email address that the applications will have to come through mm -hmm. was my office email address and my personal email address because I have to respond. If something happens to the official email, I have to respond. Yeah. So I needed a backup. Yeah. So I put my own email address as well. So the two email addresses, at mm -hmm. least, they will not have any problem at the same time. Yeah. So someone changed my email address and my off they put my office email address as a backup. Then they put theirs as another email address. Wow. I didn't even notice. I noticed ha a few weeks later. So um, applications will have to go to that address. And I looked at it on the website. It's on mm -hmm. the website that I noticed it just to check. I said, but who is this? What is this? What's happening? Mm -hmm. Then when I asked, they said, oh, yeah, the boss asked. I said, but who is boss in my office apart from me? Mm -hmm. They said, oh, no, the main boss. I said, but who is that main boss who will be recruiting in my office? Can I know? Yeah. They said, oh, yeah, but the boss, the boss. I said, okay, now, who did it? 
You who did it, go tell that boss that I am the boss. In my office, I was recruited in that space, that place. I was recruited there. If he wants to micromanage my office, I will not let him. If you want to micromanage my office, take my space, my place. Yeah. But as long as I'm there, I will not allow anybody to do that for me yeah. on my behalf. I'm alive and I'm there. Yeah. I must do it. So you go back and tell him and replace that email with immediate effect. Yeah. I don't take it. The other case where my collaborator, a genius, mm -hmm. is, um, well, not genius, but below me, mm -hmm. um, he actually went to a meeting and started complaining. For, I don't know what he was saying because it didn't make any sense. But his problem was the frustration that I'm the director. I didn't bother. We were in a meeting <laughs> about 100 people. And when he did that, it was a little bit shocky. Yeah. Then everybody was like trying to see what, how I manage it. It was so very obvious. How would I manage it? Dinner. Dinner time. You know, sitting in a restaurant. And I went straight to the table and I sat down. So let's have dinner. What actually happened? What was really wrong? What did I really do that you didn't tell me that you had to go into the meeting and be talking? He said, oh no, he tried to say, anyway, don't bother, let's have dinner. Then we started talking about something else, just like that. But the fact that other people came and met us having dinner, the congratulations that I had the next day, it was too much. They said, nobody can do this. Mm. I just behaved as business as usual. Yeah. Nothing has happened. And he was the one who was very uncomfortable now. Yeah. The next day, he took his flight back from where yeah, he had to fly back. He, he was very uncomfortable. Yeah. But I was very comfortable. You know, I was mm -hmm. very comfortable. And, I, and he had to come back. We were out of a crowd, out of Ghana. Mm -hmm. So when he came back to Ghana, he, he moved to office not trying to stay next Close to me to so you, we yeah. don't see each other. But I didn't mind. I would go to his office in the morning and, hello, how are you? How is your family? Mm. Everything all right? Are you comfortable? Do you need anything from me? Just like that. Yeah. But he was very uncomfortable for how many years? So I don't take those issues, you know, personally. Mm. I know you, it's coming from your own frustration and not mine. So I manage it from my perspective, not from your perspective of your frustration. Yeah, so true. I manage it from my perspective with a level head, as my, a manager, mm -hmm. as a leader, and I don't get into distractions. Yeah, that's Because that's distraction true. will waste my time. Yes, And I will not be true. focused. That is true. So, and that then and I don't get good results and they'll say because she's a woman. So I don't let it happen. Yeah. I don't let it happen. That's true. I am there for one, two, three reasons, and I focus on that. Distraction is not part of my job description. So I don't take it. Yes, that is very I true. I don't take it. That is I remain very, very professional. That is very true. I think I'm happy with how you handle the issue. I mean, having dinner with him. Yeah. It I was like dinner. letting him realize <laughs> what he did himself was yes, wrong. And yes, he literally yes. moved himself from there. Now, they are setting women in setting workspaces or fields that may not necessarily be able to handle or take such uh, opposition or let's say uh, resistance to them rising to the upper echelons in wherever they find themselves. Now, some of them are not handling these things properly. Some of them are not doing it well. What would you say to women who are facing such issues out there? Two things. The first thing I would like to say is that you remain professional. Women are created to be emotional. Yeah. Because you have to handle people. It is a natural tendency. So we put emotions first in most of what we do, almost everything. Yeah. They talk to you, you cry. They talk to you, you smile too much. You, know, you hardly see me smiling. Not because I'm not a nice person, <laughs> I'm sorry. I think I'm a very lovely, loving think, yeah. mom, loving wife, loving, you know. But because all those kinds of things make people think otherwise. Yeah. They don't think... You're smiling. You can be nice without smiling. I'm just telling you from my own experience, things I would not do. Mm -hmm. I'll try it in the professional or whatever. They didn't say don't smile, but when you do it too much, they it sends read another it message, yeah. otherwise. They think. So I try to remain very professional. And that makes it that if sometimes if I speak, some men say, oh, she's a bully. As if a bully is not part of the job description. Forget about it. Forget about tones. Forget about, think of what we're doing. Yeah. So that's it. I remember when I moved to the international level one time, um, the organization started having some problems. So we had a project. 
had to move. I actually was part of writing the project. They said, okay, I should work on that project. The boss didn't want it. There were other issues before that. He didn't want it. So they said they want that woman, that woman who was part of this project writing. He didn't want it. He said, oh, I want to be part of it. I want to be part of it. Then they said, I mean, because they are Europeans and very straightforward, mm -hmm. very professional, they asked my boss at that time, not my boss today, some other, some mm -hmm. years back, mm -hmm. they asked him, are you sure you have Juliet's CV? Because we cannot leave this CV for another CV. Yeah. If you have her CV, bring it. If you don't have her CV, forget it. So what I would like to tell women out there, apart from, you know, the way you behave, being emotional, trying to smile everything, or trying to bring emotions in, try to build your capacity to a point that you don't need a man. Build your capacity so they said a good player never lacks a team. Yeah. When you build your capacity, they will rush for you. That's true. So you will not be rushing for them. Mm -hmm, yeah. So if you are very strong, do some programs here that are related directly to your work. Do programs, whether it is diploma, whether it is certificate, whether it is reading books to know. The point is your brain. Mm -hmm. What you are true. able to deliver, if it is worth it, honestly, nobody will. And then you remain professional. Now, I don't see who they can suck me, but I'll not like a job. Yeah. So that's it. If you are a professional, if you're selling tomatoes, make sure that you didn't have them planted at your backyard. And they should be fresh enough that when you bring them out, everybody's rushing for it. You don't need to be like me. But anything you're doing, mm -hmm. try that. It should be, you should do it super, super, super well. If you don't do it super well, you are a woman and you should be relegated. But if you come to the forefront with your woman, whatever, and then the professionalism, it's very difficult for them. You know, any man who wants to push you aside is thinking, what do I do yeah. if I lose her? Yeah. So that professional, that strong background yeah. is essential. It's very important. That's the way I look at it. So when you want to even deal with people and you're talking sense, making a lot of sense to them, they will not be able to. No matter what they see, no matter how you don't introduce distraction, you remain professional, level-headed, and focused. That's why I manage my life. That's, that's like, that. that is a lot. That is deep. <laughs> that is deep. Now, we, we have, uh, it's like something that happens where women are actually raised with a thought parting that, uh, you can aim high, but don't aim that high. I mean, leave that space for the man. So it's like what? we, in a way, more like put ourselves down. That thing, like you would end up in a man's kitchen. What is bad in the kitchen? <laughs> is it not food that we prepare in the kitchen? It is food. So, listen, I mean, my senior brother is there. He's been with the UN almost all his life. But he cooks better than I do. My senior brother, he cooks better. Today he was giving me a recipe. I said, oh no, you don't blend it. He said, try and blend it. You, you used to slice it, but try this other recipe, blend it. So what I'm trying to tell you is that in my, my home, my parents' home, mm -hmm. there was no man and no man. Both did we the used same. To, we have a, um, a, 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 a recipe that they peel the beans and then they, yeah. Is it a kose? Uh, no, you call it Ghanaian now. No, no. <laughs> okay, 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 yeah. So, yeah, they'll peel the beans and then they do it in the mortar and mm -hmm. things like that. Put mo like moi moi, I don't know. Yeah. Yes, then they fry it. They don't even fry You can fry some. Yes. They fry some as Accra. Yes. And then they do moi moi and they put some in leaves. Everybody must peel that beans. There's no man and no woman. My mother will ask you that men don't eat. <laughs> okay, if a man wouldn't, if a, if a man doesn't peel the beans, my mother, I loved her. Me has so rice in perfect mm -hmm. peace. She will take the beans mm -hmm. unpeeled, keep it. When she's serving food and put your own there and put your <laughs> um, um, your there, unpeeled you beans. Put, yes, she'll put your unpeeled beans and your unpeeled there and serve you. Yes, my mother will do that. Yeah. So I just want to tell you that kitchen is a good thing. Yes. I don't mind to be in the kitchen. But remember, if I'm not there, you want to eat, you have to go to the kitchen. Yes. So there is nothing wrong in kitchen. I can cook today and tomorrow my husband knew me for that 
I cook because I am better in the cooking than you, but not because it is my job. Sure. So if I'm get running late at, in the office, you cook. So when I come tired, you save me. And it was like that. It wasn't nothing. There was nothing like, I don't know, no complex. The only problem I had with my husband cooking was that he would cook his best meals every day. He had two meals that he liked. <laughs> so he would cook that for one week every day. So he's either making the um, per se, and the palm oil and the dry yes. fish and those things in one pot. And then he loved that with mm -hmm. some vegetables or he's doing okra. That, that's all. So how would I eat, eat okra? Five, four, four, week. four <laughs> times in a week, and then that. So if I'm busy for that week, he will do that for us every day. So it was a problem for oh, me. Yeah. It in, not that it was a problem for him cooking. You get the point. So it depends on how you make it, and it depends on how you, if the man is not cooking, how you take it. Yeah. How did I come? I didn't give birth to my husband. So how did I come to making him to cook? Um, it was like... Um, Oh, so I'm, I'm busy today. How do you do it? I'm busy. I'll be coming home late. So where will we eat? How will we eat and all of that? It's not from a point of view that, <sighs> no, you two must cook and all of that. You don't come from that. You should coax him into cooking. You can even start cooking and you say, come, 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 let's do it together. By the time he knows it, the the onion is entering his eyes. Oh, yeah, you know, that's what I go through here. Okay, then leave the onion now. Can you wash the rice and put it in the rice cooker? Okay. Can you? It should be like fun. It shouldn't yeah. be something stressful that people have to argue. Over, yeah. Why? You do other things, it's fun, but why is it that that one is not fun? Mm. When is this food? Don't you enjoy food? I do anyway. I, I, he loves food a lot. Okay, so for me, you know, I came from a point of view where it is fun. We do it together because we enjoy it, because yeah. we need it, because okay, so because because everything was like that. Mm. So my only worry, I stopped him because I didn't want to be eating okay. the same four times. <laughs> yeah, it was too much. If I'm having program, then I have to come home late. I'll be eating that okra, you know. Oh, but nice. not so for me, men can cook. Nobody should say will not cook. Okay, keep him in your home for one week, whether he will not cook. Will he live hungry? He'll be eating in the restaurant. Okay, let him take the scenario that he doesn't have the means. It's not true they can cook. But let us see. I do think that because it is our natural tendency to be cooking, we know the better recipes. So we like to do it. Yeah. But I don't like when they either accuse a man, cannot cook, I don't want to cook, I don't... Uh, try a different way. There are strategies that mm -hmm. you can put in place to make it be fun. Mm -hmm. That's true. So I don't like when they accuse men, oh, or this man, he will not cook. Or a man will say, it's a woman's job. Okay, eating is not your own job, right? <laughs> Before you know it, you are cooking with me. The point is, how do you do it? How For do do me, it? it's manner. If you're sitting and watching TV, and then we all look and we're watching the TV and we are enjoying it. Hey, 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 guys, let's go. Let's see what we can do together. It's a manner. For me, all these things are the way you handle it. Yeah. If he's tired, he say, come on, let's cook. Every day I'm cooking in this house, it's going to be a problem. That's true. You That's know, true. but if you take it from, a, you, I mean, he's not stressed, he's happy, he's in his good mood, and then you start it, you know. Let's see. Give him the easier tasks. That's like boiling rice. Yes, wash rice and put in that. Oh, did you check the level of the water? He said, oh, they do check the level. I say, yeah, you too, oh, yeah. You know, make it as fun. Yeah. You realize that, he will, he will, he will be cooking and he would like to cover. And when you're cooking, if you boil the chicken, you say, okay, let me give you, you want, we need to know that it's ready. Taste, have a taste. Make it fun. I do think that perhaps not all will find it funny or will take it like that, but most of them would start looking at it from that perspective. Mm -hmm. But if you want him to cook with your mother there and your aunties there and mm. the whole kitchen is crowded, Mm. He'll be uncomfortable yeah. give, living, g doing it in that space. Yeah. Your mom is there. She's already occupying most of the space in the kitchen. Your aunt is there, occupying most of the day. You expect him to come. These are people whom he's not relating in that kind of fashion mm -hmm. with them. Yeah. Then you're bringing them in there. You're bringing him in there. 
it will not work. Mm -hmm. It will not flow well. It will not blend. It's like mixing palm oil and water. It will not flow well. They have their own kind of conversation they can they can engage yeah. in, but that's not part of it. Yes, yeah. So if you blend him in there, it will not blend. So we have to be careful what we ask the men to do yeah. and where and with whom present. That kind of conversation should be when he's with his own close oh, yeah. people. Your mother is his mother and in a different kind of way. So don't come to say your mother is in the kitchen to she come down. You get so we should be able to understand these things. We are Africans. We should know how it how it it's, it's done. Yeah, how they look at it. That's the true. African perspective. You that know. is true. Well, that's you. You really have like given us a lot, touched on a lot, spoken like this is this is so much. I don't know, Maud. Yeah, I mean, the interview has been an interesting one. I've learned a lot. I've learned about how we shouldn't let our frustrations get to us because exactly. if you let your frustrations get to you and then you start to underwork, you start to do less than you can actually do, mm, yes. then they start to think, oh, she's not doing best, because she's not giving she's her best because she's a woman. And I've learned that if you want somebody to join you in something, you should coax them Pretty into much, it. Yeah. You shouldn't make it like, because I'm doing it, you have to do it too. I mean, I, I believe in as much as the discussion was around cooking, it can be applied in every part in of our life. Yes, in different If you want somebody life. to join in something you're doing, you should yes. coax them. You should find a way to bring, bring them, them on in. board. Yes. Yes. Give more like open them up to the enticing aspects of it. Yeah. Yes. And not. I mean, make them crave to want to know, know about, about what it, it is yes. that you're that's, doing. That's true. That is true. That is true. Thank you so much for your time. Like, I really wish we had more time. <laughs> yes, I do. This this is something we should do again sometime. We should. Too. We should. I think we we need we need to do a chain of series, one topic after the other. But this yeah, has been very. I, nice I think uh, working in the local government space, we are we do everything because every business is local. Everything is local. Mm -hmm. When somebody wants to talk to me about um, some big guys, I ask them where do they live. They live at Adenta, at Cantonment. I suppose that's a local space. There is a mayor there, local government. Yeah. He's the one ensuring that that vicinity is clean. They have water. They have good roads. Yeah. They have, they have. And if anything is happening there, the first person they will look for is the mayor. The mayor so yeah. everything is local. That's true. So we do, uh, we are jack of all trades, but masters of, of almost yeah. all. Almost because, all, that's yeah, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's very true. So, yeah. So Thank any day, any time, I'm available. You just give mm -hmm. me a call, and then we see how we can arrange that, we'll manage that. that. If I'm in a crowd, yes. fine. We'll sure, yeah. we'll do that. We'll now, do before that. you go, um, I think we would all like to commend you on the on the work that you're doing. Yes. Because I feel like women have more maternal instincts. I'm not saying men can do it, but women have this thing where they want to make every place better. Yeah. And for a woman to be in the position of executive director means. We're hoping to see great Reach things. Now. We're hoping to see yeah, yeah. our communities, our local, our local areas look better That's in yes. more years to come. Yes. Yeah, yeah, we're trying, but you know, all those things need resources, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know yes, we come come to ideas. We don't lack ideas. But the funds. Yeah. And um, I was telling someone that our community in Africa, we have a way that we live, but now modernism, we need hard roads. So only to tie our roads is a lot of money. Only to build That's the bridges true. is a lot of money. We used That's to, true. the way our great grandparents used to live, now we need a lot of resources to, to, to bring change, up, yeah. to come up with all this development that we need, you know, so it becomes a little bit of a challenge. Yeah, but bit by bit, we'll get there. Yeah, I do think surely, so. Definitely. <laughs> do so, think in so. case there's anybody listening, any company organization listening that might want to partner with you or work with you on any of your projects, how can they reach you? Well, fiscal address. Um, you know, the local government association, the, the local governments in Ghana, they have an association called NALAG. Yeah, National Association of Local, local Authorities of Ghana. Mm -hmm. They are building it somewhere at uh, South Legon. South, no, yeah, South Legon, yes, at Okongulu, South Legon. Yeah, I am actually in that building. Okay. I'm living, I'm in my office on the first floor. So I'm there. If, or you talk to any Nalag person, yeah, I'm on that first floor of Nalag building. Mm -hmm. So I'm always there. 
yeah and uh, my phone number oh, i don't know that can be email email you can send yeah you. yeah email fine but then uh, they miss one one well, it's tr- okay. <laughs> yeah so j j Juliet, okay. m for mary e for edward k for kite o for orange n for nose and then e for edward J McConnell, that's my that's my name. J McConnell. J okay. McConnell at yahoo.com. Okay. Or J for Juliet, M for McConnell, S A L E Sale. J Juliet McConnell Sale. J M Sale. Okay. At U C L G A. United Cities and Local Government of Africa dot org. U C L G A. G A, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Dot org. Dot okay. org, yeah. So okay. um may I'm vele- I'm available. Anything developmental, anything, mm. anything. NGO, civil society organization, government, and everything, and international, we work with all of them. In so far as it has to bring development to Africa, we are ready. Definitely. Thank you so much. It's been an amazing time with you.